Hey guys, my name is Beata Mososzeszka and I'm representing Project People, the Lean Strategic Agency. Today I want to welcome you to the workshop organized by the Foundation supporting OMG KRK uh, during the German Scale Acceler Acceleration Program for Early Stage Startups. Today we are going to talk about KPIs and OKRs, so simplifying that about how to measure your business. I will share the presentation with you, I'll share with my screen with you. And we'll start with a short story about myself. So, as I told you, my name is Beata Nososzyszka and I'm the CEO and strategist at Project, at Project Pool, which is the Lean Strategy Agency. We are delivering, we are designing the business and marketing strategies for our clients. Uh, I used to work uh, mostly in the IT uh, companies. So I started my career in nasva.pl, which is the biggest provider of domain, uh, domains and hosting in Poland. Then I uh, switched my career to work in software houses like Lunar Logic and Vsoft. Uh, after a couple of years, I joined the Sabre team, which is one of the biggest travel tech in the world. Uh, and my career, as let's say, in the commercial way, uh, was finalized with uh, the cooperation of Google and T-Mobile in the acceleration programs. So I supported them during the work program in T-Mobile and uh, Google Launchpad uh, start in uh, Warsaw. Uh, then I opened the Project People four years ago with Jan Nostapin, and I'm let's say working here, I'm creating this business since four years. And today I wanna to share with you my personal experience around building KPIs and OKRs. And uh, I know that when you're a startup, um, it's hard to imagine all, all those metrics, all of the materials, all of the um, uh, things you should do. So I will sh share with you our personal story, our personal way to create the whole uh, metric system we have right now after four years. Uh, but before I will do that, I want to share with you some, some, let's say, thoughts on building metrics in startups. Watching different businesses, you can have an impression that they're measuring everything. Measurements are important and let you uh, track your growth and grow your business efficiently. But the number of metrics should be optimized uh, and adjusted to the size and the age of the company. And measuring too big number of uh, things uh, is even worse than measuring nothing. Uh, you should working with startups, we can observe that they are uh, often following a lot of unimportant things. It's hard for them to analyze them and they are lost in the number of data and unimportant numbers. Uh, and in their position, they, uh, some, there are some startups that are not measuring anything. So in our, in our perception, uh, uh, the best option is the harmony, is some kind of balance uh, between number of data you need and number of data you are measuring. So the number of net metrics should grow with your company and should be optimized as the other areas of your business is optimized too. When we started uh, Project People, even before we, you know, we built any sales funnel or marketing funnel or we did any marketing activities or start cooperation with any client, we start, set up uh, the very first KPIs and OKRs and we even didn't know that that's that. <laughs> that's, that's a KPI or OKR. Um, we didn't call it like that. But we precisely define some values in the, in the four areas. Uh, first of all, in the area of finances. Second of all, in the area of marketing. Third of all, in the area of uh, sales and customers. And then in the area of the team. So our work uh, in the company. Uh, the photo you can see here is, uh, uh, um, is from our archives. Uh, that's for Canary Island Strategic Workshop. We went to four days uh, to very 
nice place uh, and we we discuss the vision for project people and then we for okay so how we we'll measure um uh if we are successful in our business and as i mentioned uh we we set up goals and kpis in four areas so first of all we start to do with finances and here you can see the exemplification of that that's the basic cash flow uh, so um, uh, regarding uh, finances we set up a couple of let's say a couple of levels of goals first of all we set up the goal of the level of monthly income and then on the level of the yearly income then we split it into product customer segments and sources of income uh, we also visualize that in the form of the uh, very simple uh, simple cash flow as you can see here uh, such a visualization is showing you the progress uh, and where you are regarding your goals your you know aspirations and as you can see here it is a very simple system so we measure the we set up the goal uh, we set up the the um, numbers from archives let's say uh, and then we uh, measure the percentage of realization of the goal uh, but we also put a particular numbers for each month um, that gave us information about the progress gave us information about uh, what are the results that are uh, leading us to to achieve our goals in the end you can see some uh, some connected some um, aggregated data so we had here a yearly income uh, and a connected value for the particular uh, segment of products and uh, clients. Sorry for, for this inconvenience, but I'm not sure why the slides are moving without my, my activity, my action. Uh, so what you can he see here um, uh, is this basic, uh, basic uh, cash flow. And it's nothing more than a very simple OKR. So uh, when we are talking about OKRs, it's growing in our heads to very big systems, uh, but o the function of OKRs is showing ver in the very simple way on one page, uh, the progress of your business and the realization of goals. And um, this simple visualization of OKRs, of, of cash flow is also the OKR. Uh, we didn't even know that <laughs> those days, uh, but uh, yeah, what, what do we do that? Um, what is OKR? OKR is the system that was invented by Google and by Google team. Uh, they are using that uh, to visualize the progress, to visualize, to sim simply uh, showing where we are with realization of goals. Usually in corporates, you can you can meet a very complicated scoreboards, very complicated system when the uh, progress is uh, measured. But this is uh, very time-consuming and not showing on the very, on the on one glance um, where you are with goals realization. And who thought? Okay, so let's simplify it. Let's uh, let's keep it uh, stupid simple and uh, let's uh, show the progress on one page and that's that's okr uh, uh, you can find templates of your, your okrs on the website which is called www.okrtemplate.com i put here also the screen from this website and as you can see uh, it's simply information about the, uh, the, uh, the KPI, the goal, uh, information about the progress you, you did in uh, percentages and information per, per week or per day or per or month about the progress you did with uh, goals realizations. You can obviously build this also in, in simple Excel file, so you don't have to, you know, t take any template, but if you do not know how to do that you can also use uh, this website it's very it's very simple it's free also uh, you can also sign up to our newsletter uh, and you will get the access to the simple cash flow to the simple scoreboard you can you can gain and you can set up your measurements in a very simple simple way
uh, when we set up this goal, uh, that was, you know, that was uh, the very first month of our company, uh, and we was in a search of product market fit, problem solution fit, however we will call, uh, call that. We still weren't sure where our clients are and who our clients are. So, uh, next to the to um, to the cash flow we set up the quarterly analysis so we met with my co-founder Jan Staffin once a quarter and we analyzed data which was coming from this those OKRs that was coming from this uh, uh, cash flow we also added then some measurements that were important from our point of view so for example the touch point we had with clients uh, what was the source of them, uh, who was buying and who not, um, if the client was uh, um, willing to pay or not, etc, etc. And adding those data uh, and connecting them with the cash flow, with those OKRs we had, uh, we uh, quarterly uh, take some lessons learned and uh, set up the roadmap for the next quarter, optimize, optimizing our activities, optimizing our uh, way of working based on that. Uh, those additional metrics which we added quarterly was a base to, uh, to the more complicated uh, scoreboard which we have right now. Uh, so those uh, things we are measuring um, on a daily basis regarding our clients. So summarizing, uh, summarizing this very uh, long uh, monologue, first of all, start measuring things that are crucial for your business. Do not measure too big number of KPIs. In the second row, set up metrics that are simple, uh, but are important for your business. Uh, exa for example, those financial like income, but also those connected with customers, with uh, clients, like number of leads of a number of customers. Then choose a tool. So that could be even an Excel file on Google Drive or an Excel file if you are using Windows or Microsoft 365. But decide that will be the only one place when you are aggregating all the data you will have around your, your metrics. Then visualize. So uh, show, show that uh, in the form of OKR on a very simple um, uh, tool that will show the progress, that will measure the progress and that will let you information to, to make decisions. And those make decision is on the level of the quarterly analyzing those data. So you are sitting once a quarter, you can even add this to your calendar. Uh, so you will make that uh, in a very regular, frequent way. Uh, so you can uh, take those data and um, take some uh, steps, uh, make some decision based on that. That's the most important part because measuring is one thing. You can track progress and, you know, it's like, building your ego up, uh, but uh, then what is the most important in business is taking actions based on that. So analyzing and taking some actions. Those steps was the uh, very first time to, first step to, to the measurements. Uh, so giving you to more, more advanced measurements. So the next step from our side was to build a more complicated uh, scoreboard. And as you can see here, uh, we added some, uh, some KPIs, some OKRs, and um, our marketing and sales processes. We also added some uh, KPIs and um, OKRs and uh, our customers uh, and uh, the way we are cooperating with them. Uh, and, but we did that in the second year of existing of our company. So first of all, we set up the very simple, very, very like uh, even stupid way, let's say. So the number of KPIs were smaller than 10 uh, to measure. 
that was the first year of our uh, of our company. And then during the second year, we added numbers, the added metrics that was important from our point of view. Uh, and as you can see here, um, I will I'm, I show you here some you know the, the screen from our scoreboard uh, uh, from these very days. Uh, so as you can see, for example, for marketing and sales processes, what do we measure? We measure the number of leads. We measure the sales efficiency. We measure the number of inbound and outbound leads uh, uh, in opposition. Uh, so leads that are coming uh, to us from uh, from our marketing activities and from sales activities in general. We measure also the number of case studies um, that we are writing because we uh, we had the hypothesis that the number of case studies is uh, in a very close relation. We publish is a very close relation with uh, uh, the number of leads. And uh, when we measure that, we uh, captured that uh, one case study is an iteration is uh, giving us around 10 leads that are coming to our company. Uh, we also measure some marketing activities like publication on Jibo or uh, conference meetups we are uh, performing. Uh, uh, publication in external media or uh, personal branding posts or activities because that was the important part of our marketing funnel. Uh, regarding clients, uh, we also measure some quality and qu uh, qualitative and quantitative data. So um, talking about uh, quantitative data, we uh, we uh, measured uh, LTV, which is lifetime value of the client. And here in scoreboard in OKRs, we measured average lifetime value, so average among all of the clients. We also measured uh, qualitative data like number of recommendations, number of testimonials, number of comebacks, number of uh, case studies we are able to write with clients. and. Uh, this number of case studies was crucial for us to build the brand. Uh, we also measure the NPS, which is Net Promotion Score, Net Promoter uh, Score, which is the satisfaction of our client and willingness to uh, recommend us further to other clients. So, as you can see, the number of KPIs, the number of OKRs was growing in time uh, and was changing because. Uh, uh, when you are building up your company, you are growing, and you can see that different things are going to be more important than the things that are important in the very beginning. So, for example, in the very beginning, you are optimizing to, to the biggest income, but in the, in the second step, we are adding some qualitative, uh, qualitative data, some qualitative metrics, to measure not only the income, but also the satisfaction of your clients, uh, the quality of your marketing and sales activities, etc. etc. Uh, in the third year, we uh, aggregate all the data in something which is called uh, balance scorecard. And the form is even more complicated, so I didn't present here the Excel file because it was, won't be readable for you. Uh, and right now, after four years, we are using our KPIs and OKRs are created in this balance scorecard. So uh, uh, that's the classic management tool that lets you track the goal of, your, of the company in four areas. In the area of finances, customers, capacity, and internal processes. And those four areas are crucial for each business. Like, when we are talking about startups, let's take let's take on on the state uh, startup which is doing some uh, application uh, which is from the health health tech uh, area, let's say. So yeah, so this application needs to can generate income income per user probably, uh, but also should uh, measure the cost of acquisition of user, should uh, uh, track MRR or LRR. So uh, these finances are important here. 
From the other side, we have customers. So this uh, application should measure how uh, long customer uh, is taking to come from, for example, premium version to, to premium version. Uh, what are the killing features? So uh, what is needed to customer to, uh, to switch from the premium to premium? Um, and from internal processes, how many touch points with the with your brand with your company uh, should the user have before he buy the application, for example? Uh, but also, which are the most important uh, channels in your panel? What is the efficiency of your panel? How long uh, uh, is from the very first touch point of the user with your brand to the end of the funnel? So to the purchase process and and uh, also if your funnel is longer so you are upselling something uh, how you add here some information about um, uh, let's say uh, value of the client etc etc uh, from the other side uh, you should measure also the capacity uh, and this is the area which is generating the, the biggest uh, problem, the biggest, uh, let's say, doubts in startups usually. So uh, the obvious numbers here is uh, the number of team, uh, team members, uh, but m less obvious are things like the cost of the one person in your, in your team in average, the cost of the, um, uh, let's say one uh, one spot for an employee and I, I have in mind here not only you know the desk uh, the place in the office but also cost connected with um, uh, um, looks at let's say or the other to the other benefits you are serving to your employees potentially but this is growing how the com with the grow of the company like simultaneously so after four years, uh, we have uh, 200, around 200 uh, KPIs, 200 OKRs, things we are measuring, but all of the data are aggregated in, the, uh, in such a balanced school card, so they are connected to the most, and they are built uh, up the key performance indicators, so those KPIs we have. Uh, giving you some example, uh, which is uh, uh, showing you the, uh, the um, let's say the case study, the, our case. Uh, regarding personal branding, we have uh, around 20 OKRs that are um, uh, the same for each team member. And those are things like uh, number of posts on LinkedIn, number of posts on uh, uh, Facebook, number of publications uh, in media, a number of uh, uh, performances at conferences, etc., etc. So uh, even such a small area like personal branding, and you can summarize that with you know with one activity for example publication on linkedin but uh, when you are thinking uh, about it globally uh, uh, it's giving you 20 or even more kpis of years that are important here and uh, taking this personal branding to balance core part will put that in uh, internal processes because it's marketing obviously uh, and we are taking only one number, which is which is key, which is this key performance indicator that is influencing the income, which is in the very close relations to the income. So we can see that, for example, a number of uh, uh, posts on LinkedIn uh, on the level of the whole team um, is giving us uh, this number of leads this number of sales and this number of, uh, of uh, income. So when you are measuring that and analyzing that, you can see patterns and you can build the um, estimation for your business, estimation for the growth of your business, but based on facts, not on hypo hypothesis or estimations only. 
showing you some examples of our clients, uh, what we are uh, giving us uh, KPIs for them. Uh, first of all, those are obviously uh, financial data and that is personal to, to what I show you on our example. As for example, month income, month cost, LTFA, uh, and lifetime value of the client. Uh, about internal processes, number of leads, number of clients, its sales efficiency, its uh, ROI, etc. etc. About customers, uh, is number of recommendations, number of comebacks, and capacity is number of team members, number of, for example, if you have some marketplace, for example, for trainers, that could be no number of trainers that are using. Uh, um, your platform uh, frequently. But all of those KPIs are coming to one which is the biggest, which is the most important this year, income or monthly income. Uh, the structure of set goals of KPIs depends on the structure of your goals. And here you can see the very, very simple example of the structure of goals for one of our clients. Um, uh, even if your if your tree will be you know will be uh, simpler, it's even better for you because you can be focused on uh, on uh, uh, existing problems, on things that are important for you uh, in these days. So um, I'm encouraging you to start with such a, such a um, uh, setting up the goals, which is the most which are the most important for you and then coming to uh, KPIs or OKRs. This is to give you the sense of, of showing that this is uh, the uh, structure of goals for one of our clients, which is um, uh, three years on the market. So after three years, the structure could, be look, could look like that. Uh, the other example is pretty similar, but quite different. Um, obviously, sales efficiency, ROI, however you would call that, uh, average lifetime value or, or um, purchase value here, um, number of leads, clients, value per sales channel. Uh, so here we uh, uh, analyze the value per, per uh, customer, but in the context of, cut, uh, of source of coming the customers to, to, to the client. Our purchase value uh, that could be also the very important uh, information when, especially if you are selling some products uh, as e-commerce. Monthly income, yearly customer value, uh, yearly income. And here you can see that um, uh, our, that our client, the company which is existing uh, like uh, seven years on the market and uh, like 50 percent of the of the kpis we recommended them wasn't measured uh, to this very day so they weren't able to make any decision make any you know uh, fact evidence-based decision uh, because they didn't measure things so that's the problem you are trying to avoid taking part in this workshop so yeah, summarizing uh, what we said. First of all, start with uh, um, setting up the uh, structure of goals. Then start measuring very basic metrics that are usually in the first row connected with finances and your customers. Then uh, choose a tool that could be very simple, cash flow, very simple OKR that is showing the progress in a very um, simple way. We're just coming to the third step, visualization. So visualization of your progress, visualization of the growth is the most important thing because you can observe um, uh, the connection between data. You can observe and take uh, those data to, to make decisions based on that, to make some uh, increasing or decreasing things. Uh, based on that, etc., etc., And then the most important thing is to start analyzing uh, quarterly in the first row, monthly, if you're the um, type of analyst and you have uh, enough data to make decisions, to take decision, decisions. Uh, and do not uh, put 
two big numbers in the very first uh, well, in the very first years of your cooperation. This number of metrics will grow as your company size will grow, your income will grow, and uh, you will um, build up your your business. Thank you for taking uh, taking uh, part in, in this very short presentation. I hope it was useful for you. Um, uh, to, just to remind you, my name is Beata Mososzuszka, I'm a CEO and strategist um, uh, at Project People, which is the Lean Strategy Agency. Um, I'm encouraging you to add me on LinkedIn. Uh, and if you have any questions regarding this presentation or the workshop we'll have, uh, just ping me on LinkedIn or ping me through the Slack of uh, Omeji Karika, uh, which is the sponsor uh, and the organizer of this of this uh, series of presentation and workshops. See you soon, guys. <laughs>